It's about middle there. It's about middle there. Did you charge the battery? <laughs> Did you charge the battery? Yeah, charged you had it. I know. Man. I do you know, like, I re seriously forget that things need charging and filling up and stuff, like mm. cars, batteries. You, what are you doing? So, just looking for any warning lights on your, on no. your dash. My board. left hand. Oh, your windscreen. Oh, my left sorry. hand dipped beam. What does that mean? Uh, left hand dipped beam. Left hand dipped beam. I don't know. What does that mean? I do not know. Do you think I should just squiggle it out? <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to Car Radio. Oh, hey. Sorry about the weird abrupt ending of the last one, man. I know. That's because uh, I may have forgotten to charge the battery. I managed to change the time on oh, wow. my car. Oh, wow. Well, you have to. I, I thought you'd be very proud of me. I, I sat here for hours. Anyway, so we left you abruptly last time as I was about to ask Grant an important question. And you still haven't asked me. What was so funny is that you just you just stopped. So so when, when you were asking the question and the camera stopped and so you just stopped answering asking the question and you actually never asked me the question. No, I didn't, did I? No, you just sort of stopped and was sort of like, oh, you gonna ask me? Maybe we should always end it that way. Maybe we should, <gasps> I just had a great idea. We always end car radio like a Shortland Street cliffhanger. So it was actually a serious thing because I was um, talking to you about how when we found out that our daughter was having a baby mm -hmm. and that, that wasn't sort of the, you know, the grand plan for things. No, she's got a lovely that's, that's partner cool. and that's yeah. cool and that's fine. Yeah. And I reacted happily, you reacted happily and you cried. Yeah. And her brothers cried. Yeah. One of your brothers immediately went on Twitter and was like, Oh, I'm so excited, my sister's pregnant. She didn't told anyone, so she was like, Ah! And then she said, Don't tell anybody. And of course, after one beer, Grant was telling like the local guy at the supermarket. Nah, look, I, I wasn't telling them that she was pregnant, I was telling them that I was going to be a grandfather. Oh my god. There's a difference. Can I just tell you? There's a difference. I was in the supermarket. I hadn't told anyone anything. I was in the supermarket. And this woman I haven't seen for 20 years comes up to me and goes, Hello, Nana. I went, no. <laughs> Excuse me? Right. So we reacted well and, and we were supportive. And what's your question? Well, my question is, I got a, a, um, a letter from somebody. Mm. And I thought I'd read it out to you. Oh, I sure. No names. But okay. Um, I really want you to think about this. I answered it the way I did, could as a woman, but you're a dad okay. and you're a man. So, okay. hey Polly, I recently saw your video where Catherine announced her baby's gender. Both you and Grant looked so happy and over the moon. I've just found out I'm pregnant myself. I'm only 21 and I was terrified to tell my parents. Dad spit, spit the dummy as per, but I wanted to know how you and Grant felt when you found out. Is being angry a normal reaction? Have a great day. What did you reply? Well, I replied that I think I'm not a, I'm not a dad, but I think that a lot of men feel they have a responsibility for their daughters to protect them and to look after them. And when something happens like that, like, you know, you get pregnant, then he feels perhaps like he's failed you somehow. The anger may be more directed at himself. How selfish. Well. No, nah, no, nah, that's selfish, Well, man. I don't know. I was just trying See, to think See, I, I look why. at it, when Catherine told me, yeah. I figured that she was nervous to tell me anyway. Oh, yeah. She was real nervous, right? Yeah. And so it was hard for her to tell me, but for her to actually take that step to tell me meant that she was feeling confident enough that she was going to have this baby. Yeah. She was feeling confident enough that she had a good partner. Yeah. All right. And so when she told me, I was, I was excited for her. Yeah. And I was excited for myself as a, as a, a potential grandfather because I mean, the last thing she needs is somebody to give her a hard time. She's already gone through know, all of that. But in saying this, this is a real person that has sent this into us. Yes. His father feels ba reacted badly and angrily and, mm. and and this is no reflection on your dad at all but i remember when one of your sisters got pregnant and he was not happy no and i tried to think about that and why he wasn't happy and it was f for him i think i'm just it was more like i didn't look after my daughter properly i wasn't able to protect her from the world i, I you know or, he's an extremely proud man yeah, though, proud, you know and yeah. now now i mean he loves he <gasps> loves her and and that daughter yeah. that she had it's lives his, with them so it's his <laughs> favorite grandchild <laughs> yeah no no don't oh, i really wow. don't have no resentments about that but you know but that's, no, that's yeah, not no. lovely <laughs> okay that was it that important question that was it that was the important question oh my god what do you want me to ask you some more important questions oh no it all got too serious but that's the, the thing about life okay why am i suddenly acting like i'm jewish i don't know but this thing about life it's not always funny sometimes mm. it's serious isn't it you know where we're sitting right now this is oriental parade yeah all right 
I've sat here f four or five times in the last week and a half. Have you? At 8.30 in the morning, eating a cheese and ham roll and drinking coffee and just looking at that view. And just really? Going, and just going, wow. Is that why I, when wow. I see it, I'll meet you on Oriental Park? So, so, okay, so when I said to Grant, when I summoned him to this cousin, <laughs> I, I said to him, I'll meet you on Oriental Bay. I was over there, yeah. way over there, thinking yeah. you'd think that was Oriental. No, no, this, this is Oriental Bay, where you can see Wellington. Where you it's so cool. Come. This is where I always come, yeah. Wow. It's hey, so cool. I, mm. did an, I did an away trip um, over the weekend. Yep. And I, we're in a small town, like this little tiny town, and it was the cutest place ever, and there was a shop that just sold like knitted wear and stuff really? and it was run by people that were like oh like nana davis oh the yeah older, older women and they were craftswomen. women yes. and i went to buy a little baby hat and a little baby cutty but they didn't have fpos who doesn't have fpos i know it was so cute i wouldn't mind living wouldn't you mind living in a small town i quite like to live in a small town mm. okay so we're staying at this hotel i'm thinking oh I don't want to wear jandals down to dinner. I'll put on my shoes. So we go down to dinner. Most people have no shoes. <laughs> I'm like, wouldn't you like to live in a town where, hey, you know, what? and the dress code is no shoes. Wouldn't you like to live in a town like that? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. The thing is that it's such a small town, everybody would become an individual. And so you'd have your own name. There's the crazy lady with the log. That'd be me. Yeah, there's yeah. the woman who wears shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's the shoe lady. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I don't know, just yeah. sometimes when I go to a small town I feel like I can breathe more deeply. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, there's no there's no big noises of, you know, like trucks backing up. Well you live in the city. You live right in the centre of the city though, you know, it's what's so different. Yeah, but even in suburbia you get you know, the sound of people. See around my house I've got sounds of tuis and wood pigeons. Oh, well mine is rubbish truck. <laughs> you're living in an apartment in town, you're living the life. I know, but the thing is that the, the, the rubbish truck comes at, and I don't mean to, I, mm. as you know, I'm not someone who whines about things. 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning, the rubbish truck comes. What is he even doing awake at that time? Why doesn't he say to the guy, hey, I suck you know at 6 a.m. too early on a Saturday no, morning? No, he wants to get, get his stuff done, and then he's got a Sunday. Oh, have a heart. Hey, look over there. It's a clown with a red balloon. Oh, what the hell. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. <laughs>